Germany. Let me take you on an amazing journey. Together, we'll discover the culinary culture of Germany. We'll visit beer garden and cafes, country restaurants and luxurious eateries, sweet shops and bakeries. We'll peek into the kitchen and we'll visit a beer brewery. German cuisine includes several distinct regional variations. Bavaria is the heart of Germany, with a tradition of good drink and food closely connected to it. In Munich, there is an annual celebration of beer called Oktoberfest, where the beer is king. Of course, you can have coffee too. Although coffee entered the consciousness of German people very slowly, today, Germany is the second biggest consumer of coffee in the world. On average, people drink four cups of coffee a day, generally preferring Arabica beans. The first cafe was opened in Hamburg in 1679, mainly to serve coffee to English and Dutch sailors and merchants. In the 19th century, German women created their own ritual of coffee drinking at home, Kaffeekränzen, regular meetings for a cup of coffee. Cafés primarily started to appear in towns frequently visited by foreigners, such as Leipzig, also known as Little Paris. Writers and musicians sang their praises for coffee. Johann Sebastian Bach expressed his feelings toward the fragrant drink by composing the coffee cantata. Let's return to beer. Germans prefer beer, taking it quite seriously, as it is Germany's traditional drink. Nationwide, people often drink Pils, Pilsner. In southern Germany, they drink wheat beer, Weizen beer, light or dark. While around Kelm, and in the west of the country, Kelnisch beer, or Kelnsch, and Old beer, Alt beer, are the favorites. Here is one of the largest breweries in Germany, found right in the center of Munich. Beer is brewed in cauldrons. In the past, the cauldrons were made entirely from copper but contemporary cauldrons are lined with stainless steel to prevent contamination. In these imposing cauldrons, the beer is transported to the opening ceremony of Oktoberfest, which always starts on a Saturday, lasting for 16 days and ending on the first Sunday of October. The history of Oktoberfest goes back to 1870, when the festival took place for the first time to honor the wedding of the Bavarian Crown Prince Ludwig to the Princess Theresa. The festivities take place in Theresia's meadow, Theresienwiese, from where a delicious smell of typical Bavarian sausages spreads far and wide. Most of the area is allotted to 14 beer tents, which can hold about 10,000 visitors each. The organizer figured that this year's Oktoberfest was visited by 6.5 million people from all over the world and 6.1 million liters of beer were drunk. Let's visit a marketplace here in the center of Munich, Bavaria's capital, lying at the foothills of the Alps on the beautiful river Isar. Munich is the third largest city in Germany and an important industrial center. But don't be misled, it is a green city without much industrial grayness. It offers great opportunities to rest, relax, or do some shopping. Perhaps in this market, just have a look. Though the organic vegetables are more expensive, they are increasingly in demand in Germany. The organic market is going through a boom lately. The word Kartoffeln means potatoes, and as you may know already, they are a favorite dish on the German menu. Here we have tea. Germans haven't developed a tradition of tea drinking, though it's widely available. Hamburg was an important transfer point for tea where Hansas, guilds, would store it in granaries and test its quality. Currently, green tea is quite popular, frequently being served with dessert. East Frasia, near the North Sea, is noted for its tea culture. 
three quarters of all German tea consumption happens here. East Frasians follow certain local customs, starting with the brewing of the strong black tea. Then a rock candy sugar, klunchies, is placed in the bottom of a teacup, over which the strong tea is poured. The sugar dissolves slowly, so it can last for several cups. Finally, the cup is topped off with cream. East Frasians drink their tea in layers, first the creamy surface, then the bitter tea in the middle, and finally the sweet tea at the bottom. Now we'll enjoy some real sweets. They're really hard to resist. If you have a sweet tooth, you'll suffer with me. Here's an assortment of delicious candies, goodies, treats and delicacies. Germans like a great variety of pies, cakes and sweet dumplings, Germknudel and Dampknudelin, cooked in steam or water, often filled with plum jam or fruit. Regional specialties include Nuremberg gingerbread, Nuremberger Lebkuchen, the cherry pie, Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte, a favorite all over Germany, and the excellent Berlin Donuts Berliner Pfannkuchen. Since we're getting a bit warm, let's stroll somewhere cool. How about the beer garden? This is one of the most well-known in Munich. People sit here under the chestnut trees, eating grilled meat and drinking beer. A beer garden is a place where people meet and make friends. Birst und Pommes, or sausage with chips, is a traditional meal, but you can have a lemonade with it. It's common to mix beer with lemonade, creating new drinks. In Hamburg, it's Alster, beer mixed with orange. And in Bavaria, it's Rodler, mixed with lemonade. Rippensticke and Schweinenhaxe. These are grilled pork ribs and grilled pork knees. Great specialties for when you're really hungry. We love the ambiance here, from the simple to the more luxurious. How do you like it? He plays beautifully, but we came to experience something more prosaic, the food. You can buy the most exquisite food here. I'm beginning to feel hungry. I could do with a nice, substantial lunch. What about this place right below the town hall? 
I can see plenty of drinks, but what do they cook here? Let's peek into the kitchen then. Mashed potatoes with cabbage. Grilled sausage and bacon. Here's some pasta, filled with a mixture of minced meat and vegetables, called maltaschen. I'll taste it for you. They're a Schwabian delicacy, similar to large Italian ravioli. I must say, it is delicious! The guests around this table have surely enjoyed their meal. And here we are at Hoxenbauer's, where they specialize in grilled pork knees. They can grill up to 70 pieces at a time. Wonderful! Wunderbar! They show the meat to the guests, and then they take it away again. It looks as though we might not get our meal here. Ah, now they're bringing it. The knees were chopped into nice portions, and they look really tempting. Now the knees are taken to be grilled. This one is smoked as well. Amongst these inexhaustible mounds of delicacies, we'll get some advice from the shop's assistant. We can't resist these Munich white sausages. Into the bag with them. Weisswurst sausages and liver cheese, Leberkäse, often come with sweet mustard in Bavaria and Franconia as a second breakfast. This ham was cured in salt for six weeks, then it was in a smokehouse for two weeks. It's a true Bavarian specialty. These sausages can also be eaten cold.
This loaf of minced meat was baked twice and can be eaten cold as well. Now let's meet the butcher who received a gold medal for his Bavarian white sausages. He prepares all the meat products with great care and aims for the highest quality. Even the meat he makes for dogs is so good that humans can eat it. I am definitely not a vegetarian, but still I think I need a break from meat. I'll look for a bakery or a sweet shop. No doubt we'll find something delicious here too. See for yourself. The baked products range from white baguettes to dark whole grain bread. The bread is made from wheat flour, rye flour or both and contains crushed or whole grains, nuts and sunflower or pumpkin seeds. Pumpernickel is a Westfalian specialty made from whole rye flour. Due to its special preparation, it's very dense and sometimes totally black. Here's an ice cream for those with a sweet tooth. Desserts don't only look great, they taste great too. Here the favorite Bavarian sausages, this time made from marzipan. You may not believe it, but they sell stones here too. However, you won't damage your teeth with these pebbles, they are made from chocolate. We're about to leave the city and set out for the country. Follow us in discovering the charms of the countryside. I promise you a really good time. What about this sweet shop? Not so many choices as in town, but the cakes are just as tasty and tempting. This bread is not burnt as one might think. It's simply a black bread. Do you fancy candy? You can get candies with nougat, with rum, marzipan, pistachio nuts, and even with hop. This lively country pub looks like it was cut out of a fairy tale. It's also a butcher shop. The owners run back and forth to meet the needs of their customers. Still, they're helpful and nice, offering products made from their unique recipes. Thank you.
let's accept the invitation to see the butcher shop. The brewery was founded in 1793. Count Pecos owns the chateau and brewery, taking utmost care for the quality and taste of the beer produced here. His chief brewer, Herr Berloitz, makes great efforts to meet the high demands. He is also our guide here. Here, the history of the chateau and the brewery starts. Right now, we find ourselves in the original brewery. Herr Braumeister explains the whole process of making beer. The important part of it is the hop, especially the hop flower, or lupulin, the yellow powder influencing the smell of the hop, and thus, the smell and flavor of a beer. In the past, everything was done manually. Until the end of the 20th century, the beer was brewed here in a demanding procedure. Beer can't be cooked too slowly or too quickly, and the temperature must not be too high or too low. It's real chemistry. If just one aspect of the brewing procedure fails, the taste of the beer will be off. Es muss also immer wieder aufgehackt werden, damit die Flüssigkeit sich durch diese Maische eben und durch dieses Sieb gehen kann. The new way of making beer adheres to the same principles, but now it's all controlled via computer. This is not a fragrant bubble bath, contrary to appearances. This is the beer fermenting. Herr Braumeister can tell when the fermenting process finishes by checking the thickness and height of the beer froth. This machine fills the bottles, up to 15,000 in an hour. And here are the filled bottles. Look how many they've produced. 
It will all go to a happy end, I'm sure. Let's visit a restaurant in a cellar. The beer was cooled in here. Now we taste the end result. Here at this huge round booth, I wonder how we'd get out if we were part of a large group. However, they obviously thought of that too, as you can see. Quite an ingenious solution. This way, no one need get up to let you out. This is especially important if you're in need of a familiar facility. While in Germany, you can visit many museums about history and technology of the beer industry. The most prestigious place is Meisel's Brauerei und Butnerei Bereut Beer and Cooperage Museum. This museum also appears in the Guinness Book of Records as the largest museum of its kind in the world. The key material for making beer, the hop plant, is everywhere we turn. This gentleman is a specialist in growing hops. The United States is one of the export receivers. He doesn't have to worry about quality. His main concern is windstorms and hail, the main enemy of a good crop. These can destroy it irrevocably. Let me invite you, dear friends, for a dinner. The environment here is pleasant and cozy. The manager looks pleasant. I'm sure we'll like it here. I wonder what his wife is going to cook for us. They are preparing various kinds of meat for the grill. They promise that there will be so much of it that they'll have to use a trolley. And here it is. The food is good and there's plenty of it. Prose it.